When it comes to questions about Sublime Text, one of the more common questions is having to do with packages and in particular how instructions will tell you to edit files in a particular package or look in this file in a particular package. And when you look, you can't find it, but things still seem to work. And what's going on there? So in this video, we're going to demystify Sublime Text packages. <music> Hello fellow Sublime Text fanatics, Odat Nerd here. Today's video is all about packages, what they are, where they're installed, and how we can look at their contents so that configuring Sublime Text will be a little bit easier. As usual, before we get started, quick reminder, if you find the videos useful, please uh, thumb it, subscribe if you want to see more, and if you have any questions about this video or suggestions for other videos, hit me on Twitter at Odat Nerd or drop those suggestions in the comment section below. But to the topic of packages, what exactly is a package in Sublime Text? Now, when we talk about packages, we generally talk about just a package per se as you know a package, like the Python package, the HTML package, the override audit package. But there are actually three different places that packages can be installed, and there are two different ways and or formats that they can be installed, which can be kind of tricky if you're not used to it, but it's really simple once we get the hang of it. Now, as I said, packages can exist in three different places and can be installed in two different formats. So let's take a look at that. And to do that, we're going to use the override audit package that I created. And it has this command called package report, which generates a report that tells you about every package you currently have installed in your copy of Sublime Text. And there are videos on my channel that, uh, have more info on this package if you're interested in it. But roughly speaking, the packages are listed here alphabetically by name in the order that Sublime loads them. And they're also categorized as being in one of three different categories. As we can see, some packages, the primary, the bulk of packages are the shipped packages with the S in the first column. Those are packages that ship with Sublime Text. The middle column represents packages that are installed in the installed packages folder. And the right-hand column are packages that are unpacked in the packages folder. Those are the three different places that packages can be installed. And as we look here in the list, we can see that primarily a lot of the packages in my install of Sublime Text are shipped packages. Uh, there are a few that are installed packages and just a couple that are unpacked packages. Now, if we wanted to, we could actually look at each of these locations and see exactly what's going on there. So to do that, you can use the Preferences Browse Packages uh, menu command, or you can do it from the command palette as I'm doing here. Now that opens up again the file browser on your packages folder. And again, this works whether you are on Windows, Mac OS, or Linux. However you sub installed Sublime Text, this will take you to your packages folder. And as we can see here, these are packages that we might notice exist in the right-hand column of the, uh, the package report. Now see, for example, here's my user package. If we skip back to Sublime and jump to user at the bottom of the list, we can see user is listed with a U on the right-hand side. A lot of the other packages in here, like Pi, WinPTY, Pi YAML, and such, are dependencies that other packages have installed, which is why Override Audit displays them the way that it does. Those are also in the Unpacked Packages folder, and we can see those in here as well. For example, here's Pi YAML. But this isn't all of the packages, obviously. This is only some of the packages. Uh, the second column in the list, and for this, we're going to have to scroll this table up a bit. We might see packages like Snappy and Sublime Merge and Package Dev and Package Resource Viewer are examples of packages that have an I in the center column of this report. They're installed packages. Now, this is the packages folder. If you go up one directory level, you'll see that there's a sibling folder called installed packages. And when you go in there, you can see some of these sublime package files. And we can see again in here things like override audit and snappy and package dev, those packages that we just saw. Now, unlike the packages folder, these are some sort of package file and not folders that contain packages. 
Now, again, remember we said the majority of packages that are listed here are packages that have an S in the first column, like Lisp and Lua and Makefile and so on. These are packages that ship with Sublime Text. That's why they have an S in this particular item. And shipped packages are packages that, as the name suggests, are shipped with Sublime. So everybody that's running the same build of Sublime has these packages installed. They are the, the common packages, if you will. Now, these particular packages don't exist anywhere within this folder because this folder is the data folder. And this is the place where our packages and our customizations and everything about our particular install of Sublime Text is stored. But the packages that are shipped with Sublime, they're common to everybody that uses Sublime, including if there are multiple users on the same computer that both run Sublime or multiple people that run Sublime. So in order to find those files, you need to go to a different place. So here on Windows, what we can actually do is right here, we can pick this command here and say we want to view the properties. This is the shortcut for the application and I can open the location of the Sublime Text binary. Of course, how you do that is different depending on your platform. But this is the installation folder of Sublime Text. And we can totally see that there is a folder in here named packages and if we look inside there are all manner of sublime package files in here including packages like Lua and Migfile those packages that we see here in this list right here so this is the location where these packages are actually installed and that's why about the bulk of the packages that are installed in sublime are packages that you don't necessarily know the locations of because they're not something that you normally see. Now, the reason why these packages that ship with Sublime are in this folder is because you shouldn't mess with them. Uh, when Sublime gets reinstalled, those packages get replaced wholesale if they were changed. So if you modified those packages, your changes would be lost. Similarly, if you modify the packages in the installed packages folder, unless you're the one that physically put them there yourself, package control will be the thing that put them there and package control will replace those files as well. Now, when it comes to the actual formats of packages, as we've just seen, there are two different formats packages can exist in. The more common way to see a package is in a Sublime package file, which is how installed packages work and shipped packages work. Despite the extension, that's just a zip file with a different name. So if you want to look inside one of those packages, you can just copy the file out to your desktop or some other location, rename it to zip, look inside, and you can see the files that you want. Uh, the other way to install the packages is an unpacked package, which is just in the packages directory. And uh, as you've seen in other videos, you can just go right in those packages and look for files. Now, this is the reason why someone might tell you that if you wanted to modify the Monokai color scheme, you should probably look in color scheme default Monokai.sublime color scheme. And the first thing you do is go to your packages folder and you don't see anything that says color scheme default and you don't know what's going on there. Those packages are actually stored in another location. As a pro tip, if you want to look at any package, you can do that by going to the command palette and saying view package file, this one right here. Now this is going to show you a list of every file in every package in Sublime that's currently not uh, disabled or in the list of ignored packages and you can choose any file you want in here and you can filter this so say we wanted the monokai color scheme and we wanted to spell it correctly we could say monokai color scheme here's color scheme default monokai.sublime color scheme there's also a version in the tools folder one in my user folder and there's a legacy version as well and by picking this one that package file is opened for me to view even though it's in that Sublime package file. This is a core technique and being able to look at files quickly and easily in any copy of Sublime Text without having to install any third-party packages like, say, Package Resource Viewer. And that is just that easy about what a package actually is. A collection of files that could be either in a folder, in the Packages folder, or a Sublime package file, which is just a zip file. And those Sublime package files can exist in a couple of different places. Some of them are alongside the binary to let you know that those are ones that are 
common to everybody in Sublime. Other packages that you have installed are easily findable by using command tools that are available to you. And you can even use the command palette to find and look at any file you want without having to use any special outside technology. So that is, I hope, very helpful. Remember, if you like the video, please thumb it, subscribe if you'd like to see more. But the most important thing is have a sublime day.